Every second of every day, somewhere on the planet, it's snowing. For those who love skiing and riding, these storms offer endless possibilities. Once you get hooked, you're hooked for life. It's a real rush. Each winter, the world's top athletes explore the furthest reaches of the planet in search of the steepest mountains and the deepest snow. Once you drop in, it's a 2,000 foot vertical line. These are big mountains and there's big consequences. to the Himalayas, from the half pipe to the heli drop. This is an all access journey to the best of the best in skiing and riding. This is your season pass. I'm Johnny Mosley. In this episode of Season Pass, we will explore the evolution of skiing from its earliest roots to its most modern advances. Our journey will take us from Austria to Asia to Alaska, and we'll rip up some new terrain along the way. Skiing has taken me all over the world, from the shores of Lake Tahoe to Japan. Throughout my life, I've always had an appreciation for the history of skiing. Conventional wisdom places the birthplace of skiing in Scandinavia, but a recent expedition to northwest China uncovered hieroglyphs thought to be thousands of years old. These etchings suggest that the origins of skiing may be somewhere in the remote mountains of northern China. With over 60 years of shooting ski films around the globe, who better to document this find than the Warren Miller film crew? Longtime Warren Miller athlete Chris Anthony was asked to lead the team. Every year I wait for that phone call and they said, yeah, we're sending you to China, northern China. I'm like, awesome. We head to Beijing and then we, um, you know, I think I'm in China. We're here. No, another four hour flight to Urumqi, another hour flight north to Altai. And I'm thinking, wow, we're, we're really going deep. And then we jump on these horses with these sleds and this is the beginning of a three and a half day trek into some of the coldest environment that I've ever been in in my life. Traveling with Chris is Austin Ross, Canadian born free skier who brings the new school method into this old school world. We just kept going, every, every kilometer that we went, we kept going back in time a little bit. I've been on helicopters, I've been on gondolas and, uh, you know, modern quad chairlifts. And here we are riding to skiing on the back of a horse, the way they've done it for thousands and thousands of years. When people talk about cold, they have no idea. This is northwestern China. This is a different type of cold. Our, our journey into the Altai Mountains wouldn't have been possible without the horsemen. I think I would have died without them. I definitely would have died without them. There was nothing that could stump these guys. We come across an avalanche that's completely wiped out the whole road. These guys, no hesitation. They got the horses ready, loaded. They're getting them up and over the slide, taking care of these horses, taking care of us. They were like brothers, and I felt so bonded to them, yet we only spoke a few words to each other. Somewhere near the geographic center of Asia, where China turns into Kazakhstan, and Kazakhstan turns into Mongolia, and Mongolia turns back into China without anyone noticing, lay the Altai Mountains. I look up into the cold night sky, and it's the same constellations as it could be in Colorado or Idaho or Montana, but I'm literally on the other side of the planet. Chris and Austin had seen plenty of snow, but would they find any skiers? We've heard that there's a group of brothers that are down valley a little bit further that are the experts. 
the amazing thing is they were located right at a perfect place to ski. They, <laughs> they were a skiing family living in Utopia. Ski in, ski out, and perfect blower powder. The winter wonderland. <laughs> Bayan brothers. In the Altai, they're the equivalent of our pros because everyone aspires to ski like them, but no one can. They were the locals, it was obvious. They were, they were putting us to the test and uh, they took us to their terrain and they were gonna show us what they were capable of and uh, they succeeded. Man, those kids are crazy, the Bayon boys. They got an amazing style. I mean, they're using their homemade skis and they get to the top of their, uh, their line and they point it straight. They lean right back and they just wheelie down. It's crazy, they get going at some pretty fast speeds. I thought, you know, I'll give them a head start and I'll chase him down. And no, I couldn't catch him. He was gliding much faster and floating much faster than I was on my modern equipment they put horsehair on the bottom so that they could climb. What fascinated me the most is how well the horsehair actually slid forward, so their rate of descent was incredible. Then when we turn around, I had to unrelease my bindings, put my skins on, and get all ready to climb back up, and they were already halfway up the mountain. They are a mountain culture. It's confirmed. There are skiers in the Altai. A big privilege to be able to come to the place where uh, where they invented the skiing, you know? It's 2,000 years and they're still using their uh, skills to chop down trees, create their own skis, big smiles on their face, you know? And that's like the true essence of skiing. People love gliding down snow. It's, uh, it's unbelievable, no matter where you're at on the planet. Coming up on Season Pass, Tahoe's Glenn Plake takes us through a tour of the last 50 years of skiing innovation. And later, the pinnacle of modern day skiing, Alaska. <laughs> <laughs>